Ed Kerner is next. Now, Ed had a fascinating 2019 for a variety of reasons, but you know, he's really become such a mainstay in our side and such a reliable figure. And, you know, fair play to him. He's a guy that had to really do it the hard way and he represents something for the rest of the group that I think all the players can take from, uh, particularly these young guys coming through who are ultra talented. Uh, he really represents the, the, the quote, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. He's a talented guy, don't get me wrong, but he probably doesn't have the natural athleticism that some of these other kids have as they come into the system. And, you know, when you've got a guy that plays 22 games for us in 2019 and, you know, really does anything the team asks of him, uh, Stephen Silvani had a really great quote to summarize Ed Kerno, and he said, his attitude is all about the team. He puts his teammates before himself and gives his heart and soul for the Carlton Football Club. And uh, I mean, there it is right there. That, that That is the guy that everyone needs in their football club inside the four walls because he commands such respect just from his actions. And, you know, it, it's been an honor to see him grow as a person and as a player. And look, I'm just happy to have him a part of the club. As we look into 2020, having the ability to look at what we did last year and we've got hindsight and there's a benefit of that. We probably wanted to move him away from the midfield a little too early. Uh, I don't think the young guys were ready to take that mantle. And I sort of see it in a similar light right now. I don't think we're ready to push him out of that midfield just yet. I still believe he's one of the best four or five midfielders on any given day this year. And until one of these young guys comes through and consistently knocks that spot off um, from him, that's when I think we'll start moving away. And, you know, one thing we know about David Teague, he plays to people's strengths. So let's look at Ed Kerner. What are his strengths? Well, his running power, definitely a strength. His tackle pressure, definitely a strength. His midfield craft is definitely a strength. And so I don't see him playing too much time as a forward, particularly knowing that we've got Martin and Betts and Jack Silvani and Matt Kennedy and the like there. So it's going to be interesting to see when does that takeover happen. I don't think we necessarily need to look at it this year, but if it does happen, so be it. It's going to take a pretty good effort for one of these young kids or two of these young kids to come and take his spot. I mean, he averaged 22 and a half possessions last year and obviously playing a little bit more of a forward role last year for a certain amount of games meant that his averages did come down. I would expect if he's playing as a midfielder, he's still going to be able to get you those 24 to 26 touches a game somewhere around there. And, you know, he's obviously he's played as a tagger in his career, so he can do that. He can go forward at times. He had a really good game against, I think it was the Swans last year where he kicked four goals. So we know he's got it in him. It's not something that I think we're going to be relying on from him, but he does have that ability. Um, on a high level, he's a midfielder for me. You know, the leadership qualities are obviously there. This is actually, well, 2019 was actually his fifth straight year where he averaged 20 touches or more, and you just we just need more of them. So as, as these young kids start bridging that gap, um, I think we're going to see a bit of a takeover at some point. And, you know, look, he's he's not old. There, there's almost this notion that as soon as you hit 30 years old and, you know, he's 29, he's, he's going to be 30 once the season ends. We have this notion that once you turn 30, well, that's it, you're damaged, you're damaged goods. And I don't see that at all, particularly for this group. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we went a little bit too early with the changeover with these young kids. And I think there is a lot of value to be had from the 30-year-olds. I, I, I don't believe with modern technology, modern science, particularly in the sports science field, you know, Australia really leads the way there. I don't see why a lot of these guys can now push their careers until they're 33, 34. I think that's going to be a little bit more common. And he fits the bill because he's such a great runner. He's never relied on anything other than his hard work and his running power to get him through his career. So I don't see him having such a drop-off that we have to think about moving him on. And I'm not scared of the prospect of him being 30 years old. I don't think we need to worry about that. But that's just me. What about you? Do you have a youth policy? Do you just want to see these young kids take over his spot? Where do you see him fitting into the mix this year? Are you someone that likes to see him playing forward of center? Or are you someone that likes to see him playing towards his strengths, which is in the guts? Let me know in the comments below. Should be a pretty good year for Red Kerno.